Hello everyone, this is a video lecture for Calculus 3, Section 12.1, 3D Coordinates. So this is the very first uh, recorded lecture. Um, I'm just going to be going through a lot of homework uh, questions with you from 12.1. The idea is that I'm going to do some of them, but not all of them. And so I'll be skipping around, it seems, if you have the homework up at the same time. Uh, but I try to hit the key ones. I try to hit the ones that might be a little difficult. Sometimes I don't do the difficult ones so that you can kind of try it on your own too, though. So it's it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, but in the end, I think that these are really uh, helpful in understanding the concepts. And that's what we're trying to do here is teach the concepts so that you can go on and finish the homeworks and do the quizzes and all that kind of stuff. So we're just learning is what we're doing. Anyways, back to 3D coordinates. Normally we have, in 2D land, we have x comma y, and like, that's it. Uh, but in 3D land, we got x, y, and z. So there you go. Um, normally when we're graphing these, I'm gonna show you how this works, is that we have the x, the y, and the z. Now this is a three-dimensional kind of graph. If you can see this x, y plane right here, you see that? Here, let me even dash it off. This part, this part you're seeing right there, is your x, y plane here. And so let me dash it off and do a little squiggly. This is this. And so what z is, z axis is right here, and I can't demonstrate, of course, but you can. it's coming out of the page or into the page, depending on how far away you are. So this is basically coming out of the screen, out of the page, towards your eyes, essentially. And that would be a positive z-axis there. Negative would, of course, be going downwards. Uh, just like negative y and negative x here. Negative, negative, positive, positive. So that's how it's set up. We'll be graphing a lot of things like that. Um, there's other ways to do this. This is just the way the book typically does it. Um, I don't prefer that method, but it's still a pretty good one. And it works, and it's consistent. So uh, we'll stick with that. So anyways, let, let me just kind of show you another graph of this, okay? Let's say that I was going to graph um, a parabola. So let's say I'm going to graph this parabola here in 2D, right? I want to draw it in 3D. What would it look like in 3D land? Well, I'm going to assume that this is on just the XY plane, right? This is just the XY plane. So therefore here, Z equals 0. You're flat. You're on the flat plane. And so we're looking at this x, y plane here, ignore the z essentially, and you would draw your parabola. So that parabola is this parabola. I just basically bent it, I, I like rotated it and kind of flattened it uh, for your viewing of that. Um, let me do one more if that's okay. I'm just wanting to show it off, I guess, so that you're kind of getting used to the idea. So if I had an exponential, so let's say that's like e to the x or something like that. Again, this is x and y. And so in 3D land, in 3D land, we got x, y, and z. Again, if you want to draw these negative axes right here, the negative parts, uh, that's pretty helpful to see. And so you could see exponential would look like this. Again, these are all flat. Uh, I'm not taking any z into account, okay? So what I'm going to do is draw something in the Z plane, uh, but not a line, because it's too much, too fast. We'll be getting to that eventually. I want to focus on a coordinate point. And this kind of relates to the first question that we'll be doing. So I, I'm going to actually do some homework problems here in just a second, but I'm going to just focus real quick on 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5, where is that in 3D space, right? So if we were just to look at 3, 4, just this, this part here, then x, y, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, there it is, that's my point, yeah? Um, I want to take this idea and go to the 3D land, okay? So that was 2D, cool, but again, I can't see that 5, like how do I see 5? Well, because it's flat and it's coming out towards you, uh, it looks like this. I mean, it has, doesn't change, there's no perspective that we're looking at here. Um, but in 3D land, we can at least see that perspective a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. So again, X, Y, and Z. This is how I do it. 
I draw what we just did. Just like, go back here. I drew a parabola 2D. I drew exponential 2D. So I'm going to draw the 2D version here. I'm going to draw the 2D version here. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And so I'm going to draw it right there. So that's so far the 2D version of this. But again, I'm ignoring the 5, right? How do I get 5 on my Z axis? Well, now I go up. And so I'm going to change my color if that's okay, just so you can see a difference. So this is my 2D plane. You can kind of think of it like a shadow. And so I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. And so from this place here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. And that is my final point right there. There's point P. Okay. Um, so it's kind of weird, but I draw the XY because we know XY really well. And then I say, oh, there's a Z attached. Let me just go ahead and go up. So I go up five, or if it were negative two, I go down two or whatever. Again, it's negative positive, uh, just like the others. So that's how I draw it. Again, if I were to just draw this for you, like here, there's, there you go. There's point P. Everyone's cool, right? Well, compare these two. Like here, is that actually like... I don't know, here, is that 10, is that 1 comma 10? Is that, is that what that is? No, no, I, I told you it was 3, 4, 5. It's just hard to see this way. So often what we have to do is kind of show these coordinates that I'm doing to show where it is. Um, but another thing we can do is we can rotate it. So what I'm going to do here is, this is cool, what if I rotate it so that I have like this, and um, again, I'm just rotating this. So I got uh, X, Y, and Z. So that's another way to do it here. What I'm doing is I'm rotating this this way. So you can see I just rotated it around. Uh, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Again, make my little shadow. And then one, two, three, four, five. Just going up, one, two, three, four, five. There we go, there's my point P again, okay. Uh, I can rotate this thing again. So let's let's rotate it like this, I guess. So there's my X and there's my Y. What I've done now is I've rotated it back just a little bit. Um, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Coordinate it off. And then we're going up five. One, one, two, three, four, about five right there. So all of these graphs that you're seeing are all correct. These are all the same point, the same thing. All I'm doing is I'm rotating it around so that you can see it in different ways. So if it's hard to see in one place, you go and rotate it and do it another place. I mean, if you can put it in your mind, see how I, I have this point here in space and I rotate it and you can see it now. This axis was here, but now I've rotated it. Now it's past that axis a little bit. Uh, here I rotated it all around so much that it's almost in front of the axes now. So 3D space, 3D points, 3D coordinates, very cool stuff here. In fact, it's calculus 3 because we're doing three dimensions. Well, okay, that was just a joke, but I mean, kind of. We're going to be focusing on three dimensions a lot in this class. Okay, so let me actually start doing some homework problems with you. Um, how I do it is I actually give you the numeric of that, uh, it's like an ID, I guess. It's like an ID number for the question. So this is, I think it's number one on your homework, but I don't I don't remember what numbers they are in the homework. I don't really care about that uh, because I'm skipping around. I'll do number one, two, four, seven, eight, and 10, something like that. So it doesn't really matter. I don't really care about that. I am just saying, hey, look, it's in section this. And if you really want to look it up, uh, it has that ID number for each one of those. Um, so let's let's go ahead and do some of this. Um, they give me this point three, four, five. Cool, right? Well, we just saw that. What they're wanting in this particular problem is they're saying, well, if we were just on the XY plane, uh, what would that coordinate look like? Again, it's kind of like this. We had we have seen it now a few times. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, you're about right there, and you go up five, there's your P. They're saying if it were just on this X, Y axis, what would it be? What would be that point here? Let's call it Q, I suppose. Um, so what is it on the X, Y plane? Well, we already talked about this a lot. 
uh, this is three comma four, right? Uh, you're just, there's a five right there, but we ignore it, essentially. And so I'm saying that z equals zero, xy plane, z equals zero, and uh, so we got three comma four, but they're wanting you to type a zero there also. So this is the official answer uh, for that. Um, yes, it is three, four, but we're saying that z equals zero by default because we're on that flat xy plane there. Uh, similarly, if when they say, hey, check out the yz plane, well, what's the letter that's gonna be set to zero here? x is zero. So when you're starting to type your x, x is zero for sure. Well, what is your y and z? Well, they haven't changed. It's a four and a five, right? My four does not look good, sorry. I was about to write a three, sorry. Four, five, there you go. So there's your answer, ta-da. And then finally, uh, we got x, z. And so what is your um, letter that's set equal to zero is y, y equals zero. So therefore, three, zero, five. That comma's really long. There you go. Okay, so pretty easy. The last part, part D, says what is the distance um, of the diagonal box or something like that? And what they've done is they drew a box in 3D space kind of representing uh, what this would be looking like. Something kind of like that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. It's all multiple choice. So you got a box or something. They're wanting to know what's the distance from here to there the diagonals, the longest distance essentially. Well, it's very simple. Your distance formula that you normally use is Pythagorean theorem, right? The square root of x squared plus y squared. Well, we're in 3D, so we say z squared. And you just add it on essentially. Three squared, four squared, five squared. Um, and so my answer when you do all the math, it's square root 50. Um, you can, of course, simplify it. They simplify it. You don't have to. It's web assigned. It understands. So, Cool. Next one. Keep moving. Again, because this is a recording, I'm not really pausing or anything. You can pause, uh, but I, I'm not going to pause, obviously. No need to. Okay, so they're wanting for part A, find the distance from point P to negative 2, negative 2, to a point Q... 6, 0, 2. So they want that distance. Again, it's the same thing. I'm going to give you the formula uh, for distance. It's x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared, and z sub 2 minus z sub 1 squared. So this is the official formula. Basically, I'm going to subtract these from one another. And so like here, between you and me, what's the distance that you traveled if you went from two to six? What's the distance for that? It's four, right? Well, how did we get four? Well, I'll show you. We got six minus two. What is that gonna end up here in a second to be? It's gonna be a four squared, isn't it? Four. Uh, same thing here. I go from negative two to zero. So you already know if you were kind of just two negative, like a positive here, a two there, that's a two. You could skip this step entirely if you want to. Uh, and the last one, from negative two to positive two, what's that distance? It's gonna be a four again. To represent it though, two minus a negative two is what I'm doing. Two negatives make a positive, four, four squared, do the math. Um, it, it actually ends up being square root 36, which is just six, so not too bad. Next one, 12 point 1.018. Um, they're wanting the equation of a sphere um, and it's passing through the origin passing through uh, the origin. What is origin in point form? I guess is 0, 0, 0. Uh, but then it's centered at 3, 2, 1. So that's the center. Um, kind of just rough graphing this thing. We got uh, 3, 2, 1. So my center is going to be about right there, let's say. So that's the center of my circle, my sphere, I'm sorry. Uh, and then it's going to pass through the origin, which is right here. So something, something kind of like this. Again, it kind of 
there's your sphere, I guess you can say here. Just kind of, there you go. So it's a sphere, uh, and it's passing through that origin point. Uh, what's the equation? Well, I'm going to tell you it's very simple to do this, but we do need that distance here. And that right there is going to be your radius. That distance is your radius. So what is the distance, what is your radius here uh, between these two? And it's actually very simple. We just found the distance formula last time. Now, 3 minus 0 is 3. 2 minus 0 is 2. And 1 minus 0 is 1. And so when you square them all and square root, um, I got square root 14. Okay, so this is going to be important because that's my radius. Okay, so what is the formula for this? Uh, we've already seen what circles are. Um, essentially, it's H, and then you got your like A's and B's and stuff like that. And then you got a K, and you square it, B, all that kind of stuff. So that's a circle. So a sphere, you just keep going. I don't know, well, let's put a W in there and a C equals 1, something kind of like that. This is still a bit too much because that's actually more of like an ellipse because it would have to be A, B, and C all to be the same. So essentially you can take that same number and just move it over here. Uh, the main fact is that you're going to be uh, subtracting where you're centered at. So these right here are where you're centered and so you're subtracting those numbers. Thus X minus 3 squared and then uh, again, I'm dividing these all to the other side. So instead of saying equals 1, I'm going to say equals radius squared, essentially. Um, y minus 2 squared. Z minus 1 squared. And not equals 1. It's equal to R squared. And we know what R is, right? It's the square root 14. So square root 14 squared. Or I guess you can just say all this stuff here equals 14. So... There's your answer, basically. All this, and then equals 14. Cool, well, that was fun. Let's do uh, another one. So here's another one, 12.1.020. So they, this one's actually a pretty big one here. Let me, let's go through this. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 10x minus 4y plus 4z plus 29 equals 0. Woo! Um, they want to rewrite this as this in the standard form of a sphere, I think. Um, yeah. I guess it's kind of funny they told me as a sphere. Anyways, standard form. That's what we're looking for. Basically what we just did here a second ago. There's going to be a lot of this complete the square complete the square. Surely you remember that from all the other classes. But of course I'm going to show you how it works. x squared, I'm going to again keep all my x's together, so plus 10x and then I'm going to say plus box minus box. For my y's, I got y squared minus 4y plus box minus box. And then for my z's, scoot over just a little bit there, z squared uh, plus 4z plus box minus box. Give me a little bit more room. There we go. And then um, still, still I need to say plus 29 and then finally equals 0. Okay, I'm just trying to get over just a little longer. There we go. In fact, I think I can even zoom out just a tiny bit. Okay. That's pretty big, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, so let's try. Let's start to complete the square in each of these cases. You take this term, divide it by two, you get a five. Five squared is twenty-five, and that's what goes here and there. Here we're going to take negative four, divide by two is a negative two. Uh, negative two squared is a positive four. It'll go there and there. Here we got four over two is a two. Two squared is a four again. Put it there and there. And so the idea, though, is that this is going to be that perfect square. This is the perfect square, and this is that perfect square. But you're going to have some leftovers. So x plus 5 squared minus 25, y minus 2 squared 
uh, minus 4, z plus 2 squared uh, minus 4 plus 29 equals 0. So how did I get those numbers? It was always these numbers, by the way. Those right there are what you're putting in right there. Okay, It's just a little trick on how that works. So I'm going to combine all of my constants here. All of my constants, I'm going to move them all to that side over there. Uh, when I combine them and I move them over, I think I just get a 4. So there's my final answer. Let me write it out. So nothing else changed in here. Those are all squares. If they look pretty bad, but they're in the, in the superscript, it's probably a square. Kind of a joke. And then... Um, <laughs> And then a 4. So, ta-da! There's my first uh, answer there. So, uh, they're also wanting to know where's the center. And this is easy now because we've written it out. Right here is telling you where the center is. Now notice, negative 5, positive 2, negative 2. And then my radius is not 4. What is it? It's 2 because it's the square root of that 4. So the center is always um, the opposites, uh, inside opposites, I essentially have to say. Um, but either way, you're looking at those numbers, and you're making your center and your radius. This is really no different. This is all just review from pre-cal. I've just added the z-coordinate um, to it. Okay, next one. 12.1.021. Uh, this one's a bigger one. I was going to skip it and say, oh, well, I just did it complete the square. So y'all are good with that, right? But this one's, this one's tough. So I wanted to make sure not to leave you in the dark on this one. Um, so here, let's start working it. First off, to complete the square, you're going to need to get all these letters on the same side. I don't care about the one. You can leave that alone. So uh, 2x squared, whoa, 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 minus 8x. There's nothing to do with that y right now. And then I'm going to say plus the 16z. So I'm going to leave the 1 alone. He's fine. You don't have to move him or nothing. Uh, I need to complete the square, but to do that, I want to pull the 2 out to the front first. And that's where this one gets a little bit more tricky because your boxes are on the inside of the parentheses. You're going to have to distribute that 2 eventually uh, when you start doing all the math. Okay. Same thing here. I'm going to take the 2 out, and it leaves me with an 8. And then again, plus box, minus box, uh, equals 1. There you go. All right. So I do the same process here. Uh, negative 4 over 2 is a negative 2. Negative 2 all squared is a 4. So that's going to go here and there. Uh, same thing here. 8 divided by 2 is a 4. 4 squared is 16. There and there. Rewriting it. And I'm going to want to go slow on this one just so that you're okay uh, with what I'm doing. I'm going to try to show you uh, all the steps on this one. Whoa, forgot that too. Oops. Plus 16 minus 16 equals 1. Okay, we got it. This part, if I'm wanting to factor it, and this part, if I'm wanting to factor it, what are those going to be? inside the parentheses here, x minus 2 squared. Notice where the parentheses are. I just replaced this part. That was it. I leave that stuff alone right now. I'll get to that here in just a second. Same thing here. What, do, what does that factor down to? z plus 4 squared. Notice that 16 is still on the inside. And so I distribute my 2 essentially to both of these and both of those. Uh, that one went a little squirrely. Close enough. So um, we got 2, x minus 2 squared minus what now? Minus 8. That's the important step right there. When I was going through all these classes, you know, you can't imagine how many times I got that part wrong. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to stress it. Because again, the 2 times 16 is 32. I messed that up all of the time. So I'm trying to make sure you don't. Um, I guess that's part of my job. So, I want all my constants on the one side over here, so move those over. Obviously, you're adding 32, adding 8, and then with the 1 also, 
uh, I think it's 41. Let me write it out. We're really close to the end. But there's one more step we got to work on. Okay. Notice they all have a 2 in the front. So I'm going to divide by 2 all over the place. And so to make it look really pretty now, those 2's cancel, leaves just a Y. I guess if you wanted to know, like, where's the center for Y? You can put a 0 in there. This is still okay for WebAssign uh, because it accepts all kinds of different uh, answers that are equivalent. So 41 over 2. I think that's, yeah, that's it. There you go. So um, that one's a little bit bigger, but I'm glad we went through it together. Let's keep going. So next one, 12.1.025. So they say that we have a sphere, and it's centered at 2, negative 1, 5. Um, part A, and, and so there's like three parts of this. I'm just going to do part A. Part A says that this sphere is touching the XY plane. And so the others are like plane. The other ones are like the YZ plane and all that kind of stuff. So I need to make a point here for it. Um, what's going on is that I have that same center, and it's going straight out to this plane and just barely touching it xy plane, what is z equal to for this is 0, right? So this part goes to 0, but all the rest stays the same. This is my other point. You can call this p and q, essentially. And then I want to find that distance between them. That would be that radius. So we've already seen this. That was back a couple questions ago. Um, as far as like trying to draw this thing, it's not going to be perfect, but um, 2 and then a negative one is gonna be like right there. And so this is its shadow, that's where it's gonna to be touching. But then it went up five, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, about right there. So this is supposedly P, this is Q, and that was the center, so it's a big sphere like this, okay? Well, I'm gonna ask you, what's that distance from here to here? What's that radius? from here to here, what's your distance? And you can easily see it, it's right here, right? Your radius equals five, there it is. So your radius equals five. Uh, you can do the math if you like, everything else just cancels. Um, so that's pretty easy. Now, we have their center as well, so we can easily put that in. X minus the two squared, Y plus the one squared, again, centered at z minus the 5 squared equals radius squared 5 squared. I know my r doesn't look good. You know what? Let's just make it a capital R. <laughs> uh, it's still not great, but it's it's okay. You heard me say it, so it's good enough. Okay, so yeah, there's my radius, and I square it, r squared. There's your answer. Again, part b, part c, very similar stuff. Moving on, 12... Point one point oh four nine. Okay, there we go. It says uh, find an equation uh, for all points that are equidistant. Ooh, equidistant. Like, what is that? Um, from, and they give you two points here. A is negative two, four, three, and B, which is at four, three, negative one. This is actually really an interesting question. Um, I'm not gonna draw these perfectly, but here let's kinda just in 3D land understand kinda what's going on. Let's say that I have a point right here, let's say, and a point right there. Again, I'm just, you know, they match up somewhere right there. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what's going on is that they need to be equidistant uh, to one another. So you see, like, where's the middle point, right? But then what about right here, right? So that's also going to be equal equal distances. There doesn't have to be the shortest distance. It never said that. It said uh, uh, equal distances. So what about, like, right here? Again, this is 3D land, so you're seeing that those are the same distances. What's happening is that it's not just even a line. It's an entire plane. 
it's like a whole sheet of paper between these two points that they're always going to be the same uh, distances from. So that's a plane. It's basically a piece of paper. You can think of it like that. And uh, so it's real, or like a mirror or something like that, or a pane of glass. Uh, so very cool here. Uh, good concept. What do I do? <laughs> So equidistant is actually going to be the trick for this. I went and looked this one up on the solution guide just to make sure, because like I kind of knew where it was going on, but I wanted to make sure I did like the book, you know. Uh, and the book was like, oh, equidistant, that's the idea. So I said, oh yeah, that's, that's easy. So what's your distance essentially um, from any point starting at A, let's say. So uh, I'm going to take these and say the distance at any point from A Notice I'm using the opposites, inside opposites. This is essentially a distance uh, from any point, uh, no, at any point from that point. So something like that. Well, this is the same distance as the other one, equa distance. So let me real quick finish this one off here. Again, inside opposites, that's a plus one there. They're saying this distance equals this distance. They're equal. These two right here, they're the same. So I'm saying this one equals that one. Well, what do you do? Well, these square roots are really annoying. So I'm going to square both sides. I know you don't need that little equal sign. So these are the same, square both sides, and uh, that makes it a lot easier uh, to deal with. So this equals, and then we got all this stuff here. Now, I know you're thinking, man, that is just crazy big. Um, how am I going to finish this problem? Well, it is Cal 3, so things are going to take a while sometimes. But this is actually fairly simple. All you're going to do is foil, foil, foil it all out. Um, that's an equal sign, by the way. I know it kind of blends in with the rest of it. Um, so here we go. These are actually really simple. We got a 4x plus 4... I'm sure that you know these, so I'm just going to go through them really quick like 4 times 4 is 16, 3 times 3 is 9, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna break it down like this so equals, all this stuff uh, equals, and I'm going to start writing here if that's okay, it's just for space sake really, uh, minus 8x plus 16. I'm over here now. Uh, y squared minus 6y plus 9. Z squared plus 2z plus 1. Woo, man. So all these squares can cancel because you're essentially having them on the same side. Subtract x squared on both sides. Subtract y squared. Subtract z squared. You get the idea. Um, and so you got all this stuff left over. I'm going to take all my x, y's, and z's, and I'm going to move them over to the other side and so I got 4 and now plus an 8 right this is moving over is 12 I got negative 8 plus a 6 so that's a negative 2 and then I got negative 6 minus 2 is going to be a negative 8 z um, I'm going to take all my numbers and now I'm going to move those over uh, to the other side so it's kind of weird. Negative 4, negative 16, negative 9. Positive 16, positive 9, positive 1. Well, it's funny because these 16s are going to cancel. The 9s are going to cancel. Negative 4 plus 1 is a negative 3. Whew! Uh, and that actually, that's the answer. You're done. Um, and that's actually a plain equation. I don't think we've really gotten to that yet, but that's what the idea is. We're going to have a lot more to talk about that later. And that's the end of that section. So um, if you have any questions, of course, let me know. I'm always here for you. Have a great day. Thank you very much, guys.